So my previous DIY smart laundry video, we took a D1 Mini and a CT clamp and we built a power monitor for an electric dryer. But there was one big issue that we had to use some custom Arduino code. But now we're gonna show you how to do it all with ESP Home without having to install or do any coding in Arduino IDE. So let's get to it. So the build using the D1 Mini and the CT clamp and the breadboard we used before is all the hardware is still gonna be the exact same. So we're gonna include that in this video for people that didn't do that build before, but we will include the timestamps and all the links to the various parts to build it. If you wanna fast forward, if you've already built yours and just wanna update it to ESP Home, check out the description. We'll leave the timestamp that'll bring you all the way to the ESP Home install. So with the version of 1.13 of ESP Home, Odo and the gang built in the CT clamp which is a huge improvement because we did try to use some code before on a live stream with ESP Home, but we had some issues with it dropping off the Wi-Fi or the API or having some timing issues, but this all solves all of that and makes it built into the ESP Home base completely. You can also do an upgrade from using the A0 pin on the D1 Mini to also using the ADS1115 board, which has a higher accuracy using the same exact code in ESP Home. But we won't be showing that in this build that's a little more advanced, but that option is there. So let's go ahead and build our sensor and get it hooked up and installed. I'm gonna show you how to use a split core current transformer that'll be placed on the dryer We'll use a screw terminal, capacitor, a couple resistors, and don't worry, we will show a version without any soldering, because we'll be making it up on a breadboard like this with a Wemos D1 Mini. The end result is this. You'll simply power it through USB and connect the split core current transformer to the two terminals. We'll also show a soldered version for the ones that are a little more handy. And get back to the roots of the DIY part of this channel. So let's get to it. Being this is a DIY project, there's gonna be quite a few links on the various products, such as the SCT, the various capacitors, resistors, etc. You can build it your kind of your own way. There's gonna be a hundred different ways to build this and I'll leave the schematics you don't have to build it exactly like I did. So a couple things, typically when you order the Wemos D1 Mini, they don't come soldered with the pins on them already. And I know we're not we're gonna do a non-solder version. So if you're comfortable using the Wemos D1 Mini and soldering the pins on, by all means, go ahead. There is the ESP8285 version of this looks like a node mcu board but you'll notice it's a little shorter and it will fit on one of these proto boards and you can take these proto boards and hook them together so to give you more room and still should be able to fit it in the case if you would cut a hole in the side for your USB cable and your core transformer cable. But of course, you can use any case you like, you can use any size, but you're gonna have to adapt to what you need and fits your case that, and your boards that you choose. So in this build, I chose these preformed jumper wires. You can use other type of jumper wires on the breadboard, but it does tend to get a little messy looking and they can easily come out. These preformed wires will fit on the breadboard, just choose the size that you need and they will stay put. So you could use this as a permanent installation. So if you're not familiar with the breadboards, the way a breadboard works is each row, such as these pins here on this, will all have continuity together. So these will be connected, the next row will be connected. Now this row does not connect to this row here. These, it is isolated per side. So if a pin comes into here, it will be connected to this one here and you can see this jumper I'm jumping from this row over to this one and what this pin is to correspond with the Wemos D1 Mini is 3.3 volts pin will go in here that's fed in through the USB 
in 3.3 volts jumps on this white wire over to this row. And since these are connected together, this jumps into this 10K resistor and jumps into this row, which this is bridging across from each side of the breadboard. This terminal is, is for the split core current transformer. This 10K resistor ties into the negative side of the Wemos. Because you see, we're using the second row here, which is the second pin, which is ground. So ground will jump down to here. It will go to the negative pin on the 10 microfarad capacitor, which you can tell on this capacitor, the stripe side is the negative. So this negative ties into here and jumps over to the positive from the Wemos D1 Mini. What this does is create a type of voltage divider for the split core transformer. There's tons of different ways you can build this. And you, if you're handy enough with soldering, you can build even a smaller version of this, such as I've done here. I would utilize DuPont jumper wires for a positive 3.3 volts in. I would use negative here. It utilizes the same two 10K resistors, the same 10 microfarad capacitor. It's the same exact thing, it's just on a smaller board. And we bridge several of the pins on the underside to connect and use this small board instead of having to use a breadboard. There's tons of different ways to build this, so whatever you choose, there is no wrong way to do this as long as you build it electrically the same as we've done here on this breadboard or this proto board with soldering. Definitely, if you have some other ideas and different changes you want to do that maybe you think is better than what I've done here, by all means, go ahead and be sure and share it to us in the comments. We'd love to see the different ways of building this. So there are several of these type of split core current transformers. This one we're using is a 30 amp, one volt output. There is what they call a burden resistor built into the unit itself, which makes it a little bit safer given if you unplug it with the current being drawn through it. And also you don't have to put a burden resistor on your breakout board. So if you don't use this type, you will need to incorporate a burden resistor, which there's several different pages that can help you calculate the burden resistor. So this one typically comes with like a headphone type jack on them and strip the wires back. You can easily put these in a screw terminal. So on this setup, the white wire is going to go in the one on the right and the red wire is going to go on the one on the left. I'd like to thank Jim from Pennsylvania. He was the inspiration to get me to make this video and show everyone with the electric dryers on how they could use this. So in these photos, we're showing here the split core transformer being installed in the dryer. It is imperative that you unplug the dryer before you open up any of the inspection panels and get to the plug. So definitely make sure, double check, triple check that you've unplugged the dryer before you attach the split core transformer. In the US, there are two legs of the dryer. The motor is typically only hooked up to one of the legs. And if the dryer is on a cycle where it's not utilizing the heating element, it could cause false triggers on your automations because you won't get the current output that you're looking for. So make sure in, when you're testing this to put the dryer on just like an air fluff mode only and see if you get the current draw from the motor itself that turn, is turning the drum of the dryer. And also you'll want to take note of the arrows on the top of the SCT. The arrows should be facing the electric current as it flows from the wall to the dryer. If you don't get it right, you can always just flip it over and put it on the correct way. As these just simply pop open and you can close them, they're non-invasive, you're not hacking the dryer, and you can take it off the dryer very easily. One thing to note, some people have also installed these clamps on their electric panel itself next to the breaker box. You can do that but I would highly recommend that you consult an electrician before you start digging in your electrical box as it could kill you instantly 
digging in the breaker box itself. Because in most breaker boxes, even though if you turn off all the breakers, there's still going to be power up at the top of the feed of the breaker box that you can't turn off unless you actually go pull the electrical meter outside. So definitely again consult an electrician if you're going to plan on installing this inside your electrical panel. So now that you have your unit built with the Wemos D1 Mini or using the ESP8285 or you can also use the ESP8266 since these pins come pre-soldered whichever you like that's all your choice. Now we need to go download the sketch and compile this and get it flashed for your setup. So once we got our sensor built, I have a little test build that I'm going to use, which is just a simple wire with that you can see the three wires are together and we split that apart. Because remember the CT clamp just needs to be on the hot side and not all three wires, otherwise you won't get any readings at all. So we have it just clamped around there. It's a simple little extension cord and we're going to be using a heat gun to do some testing because it has a higher draw of amperage. So we're also going to be using our kilowatt meter that we used before in our S31 video, which we're going to calibrate the amperage on the CT clamp to get us pretty close on things. First, what we'll need to do, if you haven't already installed ESP Home, if you want to check out the ESP Home multi-sensor video I did a while back, it'll help you get started with the basis of ESP Home. It's a great little project I like for using on various multi-sensors and sensor builds like this. The CT clamp sensor is very simple as you can see in the configuration. We'll be adding the sensor and we'll be adding the platform ADC sensor. And then there's going to be a calibration section that will also add to the sensor itself. And I will leave a YAML file configuration in my GitHub repository. And of course, all those links will be in the description below the video. So first, what you'll want to do, and there are a couple ways to flash the D1 Mini with this code from ESP Home. You can use the USB option if you could directly connect it to your HASIO or Home Assistant or how, whatever you're using your ESP Home on. As you can see here, I don't have any available USB the first time to the to the Wim Wow, start all over again. So as you can see in my case, I don't have it directly connected to my Home Assistant server. So we're going to be downloading the binary and then we'll use the Node MCU Pi flasher to flash it to the Wemos D1 Mini since it just can be done over the USB cable. So what we'll want to do first is we'll add a new node and we'll call this one Dryer Current Continue. And we're going to be using the Wemos D1 Mini. If you're using something else, then pick the Node MCU, etc. The Wi-Fi, we already have that in a secrets file, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip through that since we'll be pasting in and using the Wi-Fi and the password I have in my secrets file along with the static IP address. Once we go through that, then we'll hit submit. It's going to tell us to pick our upload port, but since we're not uploading that in this case, if you were, you would go ahead and pick your upload port for the D1 Mini you have connected. We'll need to edit the sketch for the dryer current module and we'll paste in what we pull down from the GitHub link. So make sure and we'll grab all the code from the YAML file provided in the GitHub link. And you will need to go ahead and set any of your secrets such as the Wi-Fi SSID, password, and also I'm using static IPs. I'm not using static IPs since I had issues with the MDNS but you're welcome to use whatever you like if you don't want to use static IPs. And I'm also using MQTT in my case, but if you want to use the API, that's fine. You just uncomment the API and comment out or remove the MQTT section. So we'll copy all of this and we'll paste it over what we currently have in this editor. So once you've made your changes for your network or your API or MQTT, go ahead and hit save. So we'll go ahead and validate it and make sure it becomes up valid. And, and then in our case, we're actually going to do the compile and download the binary. Now, if you had it connected up already to the USB port, you could just hit the upload. So go ahead and hit the three dots and hit compile. This will go ahead and pull all the dependencies down and compile the code for you based on your configuration in that YAML file.
it may take some time depending on the system that you're compiling with just give it time once it's complete you'll see the partial button over here behind me the download binary go ahead and download the binary so once the binary is downloaded you would need to connect up the Wemos D1 Mini to your computer if you're flashing it using this method and then send the bin file over to it. So we'll pick our serial port, which I know in mine is COM13. We'll browse to our bin file we just downloaded. Make sure it's on dual output. You can leave it at 115, 200. And I would also make sure you do yes, wipes all data. And then hit flash, note MCU. And one thing to note, I would make sure that what you're using this on when you're on your dryer, make sure you have a decent USB power supply. I have found in some cases when you're monitoring power with using a CT clamp, if you use like a really cheap USB power supply, it, I guess it fluctuates possibly a little bit and it could give you some various false readings. So once it's completed, unplug it. And now we plugged it back in to our power supply and you can actually see now the green light is showing it's actually online. We can go to hit show logs and it should show every so often it will pull the sensor value for the unit. Now if we do need to change our calibrations, I'll show you how to do the calibrations and you can just edit it right in the ESP home dashboard and then you can hit the upload and it'll send it straight over over the air to your D1 Mini without having to plug it back up. So at this point, you can go ahead and add that into Home Assistant if you're using the API in ESP Home, or if you're using MQTT like I am, it should already be in your unused entities in Home Assistant. We'll go to Unused Entities and scroll down, and we should have the dryer current sensor right here. Now, I found sometimes in this code is not always going down to zero amperage, and I'm not sure exactly why this seems to be very new on the CT clamps, but as you can see, really what we're trying to determine on the dryer is truly, is the dryer on, is the dryer off, has it stayed off for so long, just so we can do our notifications or voice notifications to know if the laundry is done or not. So we're not really trying to grab an exact value, just trying to see if it's basically on using that current sensor. If you do find some additional calibrations or code that would help with possibly making this more accurate in your experience, please do share it in the comment down below so others can see it and add it and we can add it to the GitHub repository so everyone else will also benefit from that. We're hooking up the kilowatt meter and we're gonna turn on the heat gun and we're gonna go ahead and see if the amperage matches up. If not, we'll go ahead and change the calibration. So it pulls every 20 seconds. It looks like we're pretty close in the calibration but we can change it if needed. So we go back to the dashboard and hit edit. And you'll notice there's some filters with calibrate linear. And there's this value right here. And it's showing that the 0 0.52 equals 6.56 amps. And where this comes from, if you look, remember on the documentation, on the CT clamp current sensor, there's the calibration so what you're trying to do is see the CT clamp value in the log, and then you'll make it equal to what the actual true amperage is. And then ESP Home will calculate everything else in between. So if we click on Show Logs, and we'll turn on the heat gun again. So the CT clamp is sending over 0 0.06. And you may have to play with this a little bit, but you can change the 0 0.06 Say we'll change this to 5, 8 equals 7 amps. We'll go ahead and save it. And then we'll upload it. And you'll notice this time the compile is very quick and it's automatically uploading it right over the air. We'll go ahead and wait for it to reboot and we'll see the logs again. Go ahead and turn on the dryer again. So we've got it fairly close. We're pulling 6.88 amps and yet we're showing 6.76. So that's close enough for me. You can see it pulls about every 20 seconds, which you can change that polling value, and it goes back to show the dryer status as idle, which you could automatically use in an automation of some sort to kick off your various notifications. So that's all there is to it. It definitely cuts down this project to make it so much easier. You don't have to use Arduino IDE and all the different files to compile things. It's just done right there in ESP Home for you. 
I appreciate Odo and the gang for adding this into ESP Home as it makes it super simple for everyone to add into their Home Assistant. So if you got any questions or you have any comments or anything, be sure to reach out. We have the Discord server link in the description of the video, or you can just comment down below and we'll respond. I appreciate you watching. If you haven't already, mash that subscribe button and that bell icon so you can catch our next video. And y'all take care.